and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have yes, sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun, where we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. May be seated as we sing together the song of the day, Psalm Jesus 
began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophesy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You say that I am. Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. So far, the passion history of our Lord. To continue with the hymn of the day, with perfect love. Synecdoche, say that five times. 
What is that? Well, it's an expression that you take a part of something to represent the whole of it, so a part for the whole. Like the expression, all hands on deck. You know, when the, when the captain yells out all hands on deck, he doesn't just want the hands, right? He wants all of them. This expression can also be used in negotiation. When you've agreed to do a task, say I've agreed to do a task for you, and I simply can't finish it. And I say to you, I can do this much. I can't do it all. And you say, well, look, you agree to do the whole thing. And I say, I know. I can only do part of it. You're going to have to be good with that, because that's just the way it is. Okay, well, I guess so then. You have to accept part for the whole. Because it kind of got you over a barrel. It's either that or nothing. Pilate tried that negotiation with the mob that day. Because he didn't see any reason why he should crucify this perfectly innocent man. And, okay, Pilate's a bloodthirsty Roman. He probably wouldn't have a problem, you know, killing somebody, but he wants to at least have a right reason for it. Something he can justify. And as we know from the other Gospels, there's another reason why he didn't want to put Jesus to die. He was kind of scared of this. This was odd. And so he didn't want to do it. So he says to them, I'll, I'll, I'll do part of it. I will punish him and let him go. That wasn't going to be enough for the mob, for the, for the Jewish people. Because you see, while Pilate was right, when he said that, you know, I find no basis for the charge against him, you've charged him with inciting a mob to rebel against Rome. That's the charge. So, <laughs> there's nothing to say that that's happened here. I mean, you don't have an arm, you know, army behind this guy. There's no reason to think this. But the mob was also looking at it a little differently, and in their mind, it was a right charge. He was inciting the people to rebel against authority, the Jewish authority. Now, he wasn't doing that maliciously. He wasn't trying to do it necessarily, although he certainly didn't want them to continue to believe the garbage that they were being taught. See, Jesus simply spoke the truth. He just preached the gospel. He preached the good news of, of salvation through faith in Him. <clears throat> Jesus preached truth in law. A truth that condemned everybody, even those who thought they were pretty good at keeping the law. So that they would come to Him for rest and forgiveness. This got the people kind of up against the, the, re, the religious leaders. He taught as one with authority, not like the teachers of the law. And so, yeah, the, the religious leaders and the mob who were being incited by the religious leaders weren't going to settle for a part, for the whole. Here's where it gets to be a crucial moment, right? Because Pilate didn't offer it. He didn't say, how about if I let him go? He said, I'm letting him go. And you're going to be okay with that. I, you know, when we read the gospel lessons, the, the history of the, the passion, a lot of times, I don't know about you, but I come to the, the part of the trial of, of um, Jesus before Pilate, and I'm thinking, Pilate, come on. Get a bath, boy, man. Let him go. You should let him go. That's the right thing to do. And for Pilate to condemn an innocent man, that's a sin. He should not be condemning this innocent man. He should be letting him go. And so, you know, if I, if I was like Jesus' mother or one of the disciples in the crowd, you know, and the first time Pilate says, I'm going to punish him and let him go, I'd be elated. 
Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you be just like, wow, did you just hear that? Pilate say to let him go. Yes. Well, you know what Pilate did. All in one, in one voice, they said, release to us for X. And Pilate tries again. Let him, he's going to let him go. I'm going, to, I'm going to punish him and let him go. Now, the punishment that Pilate was talking about, you know, it wasn't just like, you know, a little simple beating. You know what this is, right? It's that cat of nine tails lashing that they gave that lacerated the flesh and caused massive blood loss. It, it, it could beat a man to within an inch of his death. It was a severe punishment. And the reason they did that, the Romans did that, because if you committed a crime and they really didn't want you to commit that crime again, they would punish you this way. And there is no way. After a punishment like that, after, after lashing, after, after your skin and your tendons have been torn, you, and you finally recover from that, can you even think about committing that crime again? You wouldn't be able to even let that crime, that concept, come to mind without going into, in, into shock. See, this is what Pilate said he would do. Now, that's a part for the whole, sure. But that's almost the whole thing right there. And they still, it wasn't enough for them. Do you find yourself in your heart saying, this should have happened. Pilate said it. He commanded, I'm going to do this. But when they, in one voice, cried out, crucify, crucify, he didn't have the backbone. He was afraid of what would happen to him if it got back to Caesar that he was going to let this insurrection just go. So Jesus was given over to them, taken to his death. I guess all hope was dashed. Or is hope restored? See, apart from the whole was not just not good enough for the mob. Apart from the whole wasn't good enough for the heavenly father. It had to be the whole thing. You know, if Pilate would have let him go, if, if that would have happened, I suppose the, the father would have found another way. But let's just say he lets him go, and he's not crucified, and he doesn't die for the sins of the world. We're not contemplating our sins today in the pews of the church, if that's the case. We're, we're not celebrating the season of Lent. No, we, we're pinned to the floor of hell in the way of our sins. where we deserve to be. If Pilate hadn't had let Jesus go, we are still in our sins. Every one of us. And the whole world. You see, God determined that his son would be the, the atonement, the sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the world. That means that he had to die. He had to be crucified. He had to suffer the weight of hell, all of our sins, on, for, for us so that we could be atoned for. So we could be one with God. It had to happen this way. Where God would not be able to look to you and say to you, you are holy. There is no sin in your heart. He couldn't say that. Now he can. You see how crucial that moment was? It wasn't just about whether or not an innocent man should be let go. It was about whether or not you should be free. You should have heaven. You should be God's own child. 
Thank God. Really. Thank God that he did not accept the part for the whole. I mean, thank him because now you have the whole of inheritance with God in heaven. You have the whole part of the inheritance that God intended for you to have. Not a part, but all of it. Not just some kind of a happiness on earth. You've got eternity. All of it. Thank God. I mean, really thank Him by not giving Him just a part. Give Him the whole. Not just your words and your actions when others are watching. Give him your heart. All of it. You see, when we confess our sins, as we did tonight again, it's unfortunately easy to give God part, isn't it? And expect that he's good with that. To confess maybe with the congregation, to give the words, to do the act. No confession. And, and maybe even to be sorry for our sins. And maybe even to acknowledge that Jesus died for them. But have no intention of turning from them. Won't God be enough? Won't that be enough for him? That I would confess my sin and, and say, yes, please forgive me but I am not going to change. Nor do I have to change. Jesus died for me. I don't have to change. My sins are forgiven. That's telling God, you need to take part of it, not all of it. I don't need to change. You know what that's like? You know, if you sin, but you figure, I, it's okay. What I'm doing is fine. I know it's not right, but, you know, it'll be fine. Uh, my family will be okay with it. They won't be okay with it, but they won't bother me about it. Um, and God's going to, you know, I'm forgiven. It's cool. You know what that's like? That's like if you got a brand new car, or maybe not brand new, but brand new to you, you know, one of those cars, and you, you get a you know, fender bender. You, you back in, you, you hit a guy in the back end. Oh boy. So you, you know, you, you, you pay for the damages for his car, but you drive your car around for a while, banged up and beat up and figure, well, you know, fix it sometime. And you drive around and you, you're not proud of it. Somebody at the grocery store is to seize your car and says, well, what happened to you? And you know, And so you, you, you drive that thing around, and it's a mark of your, your recklessness, your foolishness, but I'll fix it sometime. That's what it's like to be a sinner and be okay with it because you're forgiven. Not care. God's not okay with the part. He wants it. And so this Lent, seeing him giving his all, not taking that opportunity to influence here, uh, Pilate to let him go. Because he didn't want to. He wanted to give you everything. Pray the Spirit that we can do the same for him. We're going to fight that old sinful flesh all the time. Oh yeah, we're going to fight it all the time. But it's not okay, is it? It's not. And the Lord, who had the power to wash away the sins of the whole world through the death of His Son, has the power by His Spirit to increase our faith, our love for Him, and our hatred for sin. 
And the ability, yes, the ability to turn from it and to not want to do it anymore. Part for the whole. I might be okay with a part for the whole if that's all I can get from somebody. But thank God he was not okay with it when he came to his own son time for the sins of the world. And let's not us be okay with it either when it comes to giving our heart to our Lord Jesus. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure again to be with you. And uh, greetings to you from the brothers and sisters of David Carr and Jackson. Uh, God be with you and bless your ministry here in Allentown.